Achieved with source. The Source Engine is no introduction. It is home to all the games we love and grew up playing even though it's older than most of us. It stands the test of time with all the wonderful stuff built upon it. Today I'll take a deep dive into the roots and development of the engine starting with Quake and id Tech 2. I will start with id Tech 1 except John Romero, co-founder of id Software, claims that Quake was written from scratch and it does not use any code from Doom, rendering it obsolete. Again, we started with a clean code base. We had no code from Doom used in Quake, which was basically another of our principles of development was write your code for this game only, not for some future game. It's so sad. John Romero. Who the hell is John Romero? Quake featured true 3D real-time rendering with a map design system that pre-processed environment elements, lighting and shadows to save on CPU resources, as you can imagine computers weren't so fast in 96. Around that time, two people by the name of Mike Harrington and Gabe Newell decided they want to start a game company. And then I was having lunch with Gabe and I said, Gabe, you know, I'm leaving. I'm just going to leave and I'm going to start a game company. He goes, I want to leave. I want to start a game company. I go, All right. And that was it. They had a friend, Michael Abrash, who worked at id Software. Software. And when he heard about it, he invited them over. We had no plan except for, by then, I, like I mentioned, um, Michael had gone to id. And he said, oh, you're, you're starting a game company, you have to use our engine. So Gabe and I flew down to Mesquite to meet id. And then, you know, because we were Michael's friends, you know, we walked away with the source code to Quake that day. They walked away with the source code to Quake that day and started building on what would become known as Goldsource. That was the name Valve gave to the engine upon forking the code into two branches, with the other one being Source. From it take 2 to Goldsource, the improvements were going from 8-bit to 16-bit color, skeletal animation for realistic body kinematics and facial expression, AI reactive to the environment, and higher model polycounts. Why are you leaving me here? EtTech itself obtained all these features and more throughout its 7 iterations. One branch of EtTech 3 became IW, used for the Call of Duty series. That one has 9 iterations, could be a video in itself. Goldsource branched out a little bit as time went on. The PC version of James Bond 007 Nightfire, it added support for up to 8x MSAA and DirectX 8. Counter Strike Neo, the Japanese arcade one, had native Linux support and some OpenGL advancements. Counter Strike Condition 0 got past around from Gearbox to Ritual Entertainment to Turtle Rock Studios, but eventually they managed to come up with detailed textures and player bots. Deleted since is amazing though, shout out Ritual Entertainment. Paranoia built upon the Condition Zero HLSDK introduced a heavily modified OpenGL renderer. Spirit of Half-Life is also a gold source branch with improved graphics and physics designed for mothers. Cry of Fear used the Paranoia HLSDK with some Spirit of the Half-Life code to create their OpenGL renderer, adding improved water effects and sprites, replacing the notoriously awful gold source flashlight. In 2013, Valve updated Goldsource to the Steampunk version with a new FBO renderer sporting 4x MSAA and borderless windowed Linux and macOS support while dropping Direct3D and obsolete surround sound features. Sven Coop forked the Steampunk build and created Svengen for the 5.0 release of the game, increased all engine limits, improved NPC AI, added Angel Script support for plugins, widescreen FOV, and dropped software renderer. Valve updated the Goldsource engine again for the 2015. 5th anniversary of Half-Life, increased engine limits, added shadows, and brought back the stupid view rolling under SV commands and it does not archive. The only real good thing about this update is the widescreen FOV. XH 3 d is not really a gold source branch, more like an engine built with reverse engineered gold source compatibility, also aiming to go beyond gold source limitations, later forked and maintained by flying with GOS, adding cross-platform support, shout out to all my CSGO Android players. Man, it doesn't matter if you're 15, my nigga. I like young girls. I like it. Back to the second internal branch of the Half-Life engine, Source. This was Valve's experimental stuff they didn't include in the Half-Life release, and it's what they continued to build upon creating Source 2004. Used for the Half-Life 2 release, as well as Counter-Strike Source and Half-Life Source. Vastly improved graphics, cube and environment mapping, improved dynamic lights, water waves, particles, textures, sport for widescreen, up to 6x MSAA, DirectX 9, and realistic physics powered by Havoc. Mm -hmm. 
Valve continued to improve the engine with Source 2006, first showcased in Half-Life 2 Lost Coast as an HDR tech demo and Day of Defeat Source, later released with Half-Life 2 Episode 1. All games were updated to the new engine with facial animation upgrades, dynamic NPC interactions, improved shaders and of course HDR. Source 2007 was the orange box release with Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Portal and Team Fortress 2. This is where accelerated backhopping was accidentally introduced alongside optimizations for multi-core CPUs, soft particles, shadow mapping and other graphical improvements. Left 4 Dead released in 2008, branching away from the orange box with support for Valve Pack files, Nextbot AI, the successor to Counter-Strike Bot, New AI director controlling NPC spawning, weather effects, map layout and more, split screen support, new post effects like film grain, dynamic radial fog, swaying trees, water flow maps, vscript. It also dropped the need for Half-Life 2 content and DirectX 8 support. Source 2009 advanced the orange box with macOS support and some particle system stuff. Alien Swarm continued the Left 4 Dead branch adding tile gen, a new mapping tool to accommodate the top-down view of the game, depth of field, vertex animation, water debris flow and steamworks integration. This is also the branch used by Source Filmmaker. I fear no man, but that thing, it scares me. Portal 2 further expanded on the Alien Swarm branch with improved shadow mapping, Bing video playback on in-game surfaces. <laughs> ah, yes, I knew you told it. Blob particles used for the paint gel, world portals, sound advancements, and improved water debris flow. Counter Strike Global Offensive expanded the Portal 2 branch with support for FXAA, real time dynamic shadows, light mapped ambient occlusion, and bump mapped decals. Later replacing scale form with panorama in 2018. Dota 2 expanded the CSGO branch with these features on screen, whatever. Source 2013 is the final Orange Box update. It ported a bunch of features from the Left 4 Dead branch like VP. PK files, pair texel color tint masking for models, swaying trees and vscript, it got Linux support and Android for the Nvidia shield, that didn't age well, 64 bit allowing games to use more than 4 GB of RAM, for some reason only TF2 and Gmod, 2013 does split into single player and multiplayer sub branches, they're pretty similar, multiplayer does have a few additional features, all orange box games got updated to one or the other. Another branch to spawn from the orange box is Zengine, this was developed alongside Black Mesa after being upgraded from Source 2007 to 2013 multiplayer retaining Team Fortress 2 code. With the game release in 2020, Zengen features double the entity limit, optimizations from the Left 4 Dead and Portal 2 branches, improved AI, G buffer, fast approximate anti-aliasing, look at all these visual upgrades, ah yes, bloom. Garry's mod also runs on its own version of Source 2013 with features ported from Alien Swarm and Portal 2 and additional stuff coded by Facepunch Studios. 2014 Respawn Entertainment came to Valve and said, we like Portal 2, give us Portal 2. Valve gave them Portal 2 and they expanded the engine with DirectX 11 support, new rendering method, texture streaming, new netcode and better HDR with the release of Titanfall. Further expanded by Titanfall 2 with a new sound system to better accommodate 7.1 surround sound and DSP effects. Finally enhanced by Apex Legends with support for DirectX 12, bigger map size and draw distance and replaced MSA with TSA. Source 2 officially came around in 2015 with Dota 2 being upgraded to the new engine. It was later used by Valve to push all the virtual reality stuff. Oh, I have to choose. <laughs> The big whale at the back! Big no, whale! No, 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 Get the whale out! Snorlax, I do not choose you! Get the fuck off the stage! Valve finally used the engine for something purposeful in 2023 with Counter Strike 2. Completely rebuilt the Hammer level editor, replaced the Havoc physics engine with Rubicon, screen space ambient occlusion, physically based rendering, added support for Steam Audio, WebM video replacement. Bink, DirectX 11, Vulcan, here's a map showcasing the new volumetric lighting and 8K textures, a newer branch to come out of CS2 
CSGO is StrataSource. Combined with the Portal 2 branch and Source 2 elements, it has an improved Strata Hammer level editor currently used by Portal Revolution, the upcoming Portal 2 Community Edition and Momentum mod. This is the final engine tree with all the branches, I hope you learned something new. Maybe check out the history of strafing in video games, lots of source movement out there.